The Wind Rises, or Kaze Tachinu for the Purists, is an animated film written and directed by Hayao Miyazaki and animated by Studio Ghibli, and is notable for being the swan song of the legendary director. The story is a fictionalized retelling of the life of Jiro Hirokoshi, a World War II era plane engineer, and follows his life as he works to achieve his dreams. Visually, this film is absolutely stunning. If you've ever seen a Miyazaki movie, you know what to expect in terms of art style, but never has it been so detailed and fluid. I noticed so many little details where the artist went above and beyond. Times like when the camera is pointed towards Jiro at an angle, you can see his eyes refracted in his glasses. In another scene where he's walking through a hallway, you can see light streaming in through the window. And when characters are out at night, you can see their breath when they talk. The voice acting, however, is not quite as stellar. At least not in the English version. At the time of writing this, I haven't seen the Japanese version. Not that it would make much of a difference since I don't speak Japanese anyway. Joseph Gordon-Levitt does a decent job as Jiro, but you can tell he is used to acting with his whole body instead of just his voice, and some parts sound a little phoned in. The rest of the cast is equally hit and miss, but it's just good enough to keep the viewer engaged. The main theme of this movie is essentially dreams. Jiro's dream to build airplanes is his main driving force, for example. But the movie plays with the many definitions of dream by having long dream sequences at the beginning of every act, where Jiro shares a dream with his idol, Mr. Caproni, who, like Jiro, is based on a real-life plane engineer. Even when Jiro is awake, the movie strives to create a surreal, dreamlike atmosphere, sometimes with its imagery, such as an earthquake drawn as waves moving through the ground, but more noticeably in its sound effects. Most of the sounds throughout the movie are just people making noises with their mouths, which really adds to the surreality. Another major part of the movie is the romantic subplot. So many movies employ the infamous romantic subplot, and although they can sometimes make the movie, more often than not they're the film's greatest weakness. And to be honest, as I was watching the movie, I thought I was going to tear it apart for a weak romance. And though I still stand by the fact that both his love interest Naoko and the relationship itself couldn't be any flatter, they actually provide important characterization for Jiro. The fact that Jiro can maintain a relationship shows that his fixation on airplanes is passion rather than obsession. At one point, he states that if his job keeps him away from Naoko, who will quit without hesitation, even though that job is his dream. This makes him out to be a more rounded character, rather than the whole movie being about nothing but planes. Something that the movie never explicitly draws attention to, but I feel as subtly implied, is its stance on the morality of Jiro's actions. Both Jiro and Mr. Caproni state multiple times that, although they would prefer their planes carry passengers instead of bombs, in the end they don't care so long as they get to design beautiful planes. Although none of the characters challenge this, I feel like the writers subtly encourage the viewers to consider it. The biggest example of of this is the aforementioned earthquake. Anything the earthquake doesn't destroy is taken by the subsequent fires. Jiro sees an entire town destroyed before his eyes, and I feel like the purpose of this scene is to show Jiro what his planes will be used for, but ultimately the movie allows you to decide for yourself whether or not you agree with Jiro. It only wishes to tell his story without passing judgment on him, and personally I feel like the world of entertainment could use some more moral ambiguity. And so the career of a legend comes to a close, and with a fitting end. The story of a man who wants only to create beauty, made by a man who has spent most of his life creating it. Though it's sad to see the end of this era, we have been left with an incredible legacy of some of the most beautiful films ever. Enjoy your retirement, Mr. Miyazaki. You've earned it.